Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. Thank you so much for that. Um, As I mentioned to you all earlier in uh, the last segment, and I just want to mention it again to you. One of the things that has been on my mind, and I've mentioned it a bunch of times, and especially when we've done shows with Ellen Stewart um, uh, talking about recovery or Susan Denae, Uh, talking about recovery, I've mentioned it. But clearly the focus of those shows were really, they were not, how should I say it? They were not directed about what we're going to talk about now. And it's so important that when you take on a conversation and you decide you're going to bring to the table social media use, what it may be tied to, especially when you're going to talk about increased depression symptoms in adults, that you bring somebody on that lives and breathes it. And that's why I wanted to say this. And that's why you all heard me on the last show talking with you about the fact that there are people passionate and purposeful about so many things, right? These are people that have decided to take a message out into the world and do it in a way to create positive change. That's what this network is built on. That's what I talked about for the past hour. But who are these people? Marnie Goldman is one of them. PeaceLoveMarnie.com. The podcast, Peace Love, you're going to hear about it. Instagram, you're going to hear about it. But what is most important for you to know about this and about who she is? First of all, not just somebody out there chatting about stuff, but living it. So when you meet her, you're going to find out who she is today. You're going to find out why her podcast is called Peace Love Podcast. You're going to find out what it means to be the daughter as I was. Uh, in an addicted family, but there's so much more. And what happens when you become us and you have to face your own demons along the way? What happens when you step into a personal crisis? Now, why am I telling you all this? Because those of us that have, such as I have and she has, we can spot a crisis about to happen a million miles away. And that's why today's show, it's really taken this on. Social media use may be tied to increased depressive symptoms in adults. And I like how that, you know, the article and everything else and the researcher people may be tied to it. But we're going to talk about what that means, how it came to be, and why you hear me say over and over and over again, if I lived in the world today, and I was in my teens or 20s, I don't know that I would be able to make it given where I've been. Marnie, great to have you. Good to have you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Um, Look, articles now coming out, research now coming out, but this is not something new to you. I gave everybody a little bit of information about you But here's what I really want to know, because we're going to really get into it. I know this is passionate and purposeful for you. I know you dedicate yourself to it, level of awareness and creating the change. But I would love to know for you, what 
are some of the challenges that you, Marnie, had to overcome, the obstacles you had to move beyond to bring you to this very moment here with me today? It's amazing. I didn't find out I had anything wrong with me until I was 47 years old. I'm 52 now. So I went a lifetime not knowing I had ADHD, OCD, suicidal ideation, anxiety, trauma, PTSD, abandonment, all across the board. And once I got my diagnosis, I was like, okay, I'm not crazy, lazy, stupid. I am, I can manage this now. Now the diagnosis didn't change anything, but awareness was the key to my recovery and understanding where all of these symptoms came from. Yeah. So here's what I want to say. Um, how did it shape you and carve out who you are today? I think when I was left homeless at 17, that humbled me. And ever since that, my entire life, it has caused me to be the most compassionate, caring, understanding, warm human being that I was able to pass down to my daughter. Life is so tough that I think it just generated this humanity, this amount of humanity inside of me of compassion across the board for everybody. So how did that shape you now being passionate and purposeful about who you are, who the woman is today that I'm looking at here? Uh, she's a fabulous woman today. And I have to tell you, with every knockdown I've had, I wouldn't change one thing because it put me where I am today. I am able now to talk. I talk about mental health like the weather. It is, we all have it. We are, nobody's perfect. But it gave me this sense of purpose for the first time in my life. I feel like I have a reason to be here. People actually listen to what I have to say rather than look at me like a space cadet. So it's given me this inner confidence. It taught me to love myself and not to compare. I think self-love across the board is the one main takeaway, I think, self-love. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about the topic for today and the topic of, of, of what is happening in the world today, just to begin with that. You know, once upon a time, we used to say, we used to say the word social media, social media, social, right? Okay, because it was really like nothing. It was like a social media thing, right? And what it's grown into is a whole lot of formulas, a whole lot of things that go on up there, a whole lot of algorithms to make sure you never leave us. You never leave us. Now, is there anything really wrong with that? I'm not sure there is. But the impact of that is we fully have to understand. From your words, from where you sit, right? Um, What do you see going on here? I think it is causing more depression. The statistics, I know over the charts in college students, 130% increase of depression there. So many people, we look at social media, we compare, not loving ourselves now. Now we're looking at other people's things, not knowing their backstory, but they have this, they have that. Instead of understanding and appreciating what we have, now we're just saying, we're complaining what we don't have, thinking everybody's life's better. And I call it fake book because it's not real. I don't put things that aren't a little airbrushed or tweaked. We all fake it. And that's why I call it fake book. But as an adult, seeing people get together, not inviting me, children, looking at other things other people have, vacations, and people are really getting depressed and thinking they're missing out on life and they don't have anything when they have so much to already be blessed for. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, let's just flash back a little bit of, uh, let's just flash back on a couple of things. First of all, I remember back in the day when we were looking at how bullying became important. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I, I say back in the day. So just bear with me on this, all right? Back in the day, Demi Lovato, other people, bully, 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 bully. That, I don't know where the heck that went, but nobody's talking about bullying anymore. I'm not sure why. I don't know if we've got desensitized. Certainly, certainly with the pandemic, we have shifted our priorities. But we are now back and we are now looking. And the idea of bullying has gotten to all new levels. And so what do I even mean by that? I mean, it's gotten to levels that it was no longer I'm in face to face with you, like here, here, and I'm doing the bullying thing for you. 
That was once upon a time, that was a thing. Now there's a whole new realm of it. And I want to talk with you about how you know. Now, if you're in the world of addiction and recovery, you can spot addiction and recovery. Like you could be on another planet and see it, right? Did if you, you get the radar. Right? No. If you have the life that you have and you and I have this in common, you know, my mom was an addict and alcoholic and really not by her choice. Back in the day, what they did is they wrote women prescriptions to shut them up. Yep. Right. Yep. You know, we called them, what did they call them? Barbiturates. That was the name. Yes. Okay. But I, but here's what I want to ask you about, because we can see this a mile away. Did you see it coming? Did you actively see it coming? You can see it. You can tell by people's behaviors, their mannerisms, the look on their faces, the sulking feeling, the depression that we notice on our family members or friends. It's very obvious and it's very bad. Yeah. And so what we're going to really do is we're going to we're going to just lift the veil today. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to mention the article that I got and really just saw it. I read it. I wish there was a whole dissertation based on that article. And we're going to break it down. We're going to talk about what are the signs? What should you look for? We're going to talk about how you, as a parent and a friend, might want to have a conversation, right? Uh, do you think you're going to get resistance? Do you think you're going to get some backlash from people? Do you think that, that, that? Are you even arguing with yourself right now, trying to convince yourself, oh, no, like, I'm not addicted. I can put down the phone. Remember the challenge I gave you in the last hour where I said, okay, no social media for a week. I didn't say a day. I think that's way too, like, I don't even know what that is. But can you go for a week? I can in. you not cheat? Can you think, can you be like, oh, but I got to have that one uh, pop-up message I get on my phone. Can you do that? Are you willing to do it? When we come back, it's like being willing to give up ice cream, isn't it? When we come back, we're going to work with Marnie. We're going to walk through it. Marnie, how do people find about you? Let's make sure they have your website. Of course, peacelovemarnie.com. Just like my name. Yep. M-A-R, just so like it's, a, it's an I at the end. Exactly. M-A-R-N-I. All right. When we come back, more about Marnie. We'll make sure you get the website, everything. So here it is. There was an article, and it was called Social Media Use Tied to Increase of Depression Symptoms in Adults. Got that? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Everybody, welcome back. It's so great to have all of you. Again, tune us in, turn us on. Thank you for this. This is a very special show and a very important one. Um, you all have heard me talk about it. You know, when we had Ellen uh, Stewart on, Benny, we talked about this kind of, but not at the depth we're going to talk about with Marnie, Marnie Goldman. And the reason that we're doing this is because, you know, I responded to, I think, an email. And I said to Linda, you, you've got to have her on the show. You just got to bring her on the show. And the reason that I wanted Marnie on the show is because you're going to get to understand what this means, what you're following, how it impacts you. And even if it impacts you in a negative way, are you aware of your own, what you're doing to contribute to impacting others? Now, I want to be very careful with this because here's what I want to say. This is about addiction. That's what we're going to focus on. We're not going to tear down, you know, we're not going to tear down the wall about what is a post that is okay and what is not, because we're living in a very different world today. And when you hear people talk to each other in a way on social media that is harmful and not disrespectful, I don't care what you're talking about. That's like a no for me. However, I'm a bit unusual. This is a norm. It's called bantering. That's why for me, I do very little. Marty, thank you for today. I mean, look, you know what it's like. You've had children that have been affected by this. I want to talk with you about the topic, but let's start off with the signs. You know, people are like, no, I'm not. I can put down my, I can, uh, but what are some of the signs that you could be suffering from social media addiction? 
when you know you cannot go five minutes without looking at it, when you care wow. too much what other people are saying about you. And that's something that people want to see. How many likes? External validation. How many likes did I get? How many likes did I get? Somebody could put an influencer can get a thousand likes. Somebody puts it on. They keep checking. They only have five likes. Now they're getting depressed because their happiness is contingent upon how many likes they get. So people are, are, I see it, they're fascinated. How many likes, check our status, do people like it, do people share it? So that is like one of the main addictions and people just don't wanna miss out. It's, I don't understand it. I watch myself sometimes do it. I watch my children do it. It's like our oxygen, it's our oxygen. But it's also, I tell people what people say about you is none of your business. So I wouldn't wanna know what people are posting. Other people do. And I think that's why they keep looking and looking to see if something comes out of it. And so, I mean, that's just one sign, right, where you absolutely cannot put down your phone. Let's talk about what's underneath what you just said for a minute. Phone, well, whatever the device is, I don't know what you're using. It, it, social media, you can, like, do anything. I mean, I think you could, like, even do it from a watch now. So I don't, it, it, the point is this. You just can't put it down. You just can't not do it. So here's what goes on. So here's another little thing to think about, because this goes across the board for drugs and alcohol and food. There's this underpinning that happens where even if you do, or you have to, you go to school, they want, they you're, leave your phone at the door. You go in some businesses, you, there, no phone. We have a note right here. I know how addictive this is. And honestly, uh, my business development coach is, has told me I should collect all their, everybody's cell phone at the door. Um, why? Because it is that. And it's so bad between texting and social media that people can't control their urge. So I want to talk to you about the urge. Everybody wants about the urge to drink. Great. Everybody wants to talk about the urge to use drugs. It's more than that. These are dependencies. But isn't social media now falling into the category of a dependency of sort that creates an urge that affects people chemically and emotionally. That self-validation people look for, I think on social media, one, what are people, well, we look at it in two ways, watching people that we don't like, and that constant reminder is gonna make us depressed, I don't wanna say stalking, but that constant looking, I mean, people go on social media, my daughter, I cannot stand it. We are walking through New York, her head's down. I never see this, I never see her eyes. I only see the top of her head. She cannot walk the streets of Manhattan without looking at that phone, taking pictures of their food, everything. People just want to show off their lives. And I don't understand. I'm a very private person. I don't do that. Everybody just takes their phone and shows the world and tells everybody what they're doing and then goes back to see who liked it, who didn't like it. Yes. So we're going to get down to some fun stuff now. So social media, you're probably thinking friend or foe. Here's what I want to say about it. For me and the mission and our team here, and you heard us talk about this on the last show, Benny, all y'all. So you heard us talk about our mission never changing. Because what I get asked is a question, why, Pat? Why do you want to expand the channels like that? And I said, my mission has never changed. 20 years, it's been the same. The show was called Crust, Crust Busting, You Raise an Awesome Life. I'm sorry, that has been the message from day one. You hear people like my friend passed away, Olivia Newton-John, talk about it. We have never changed our mission. We have gotten bigger because we've asked all y'all what you want more of, how do you want it, and how fast you have it, and it's coming in January. So that's that. We've also battled with how are we going to handle social media? Because right now we handle it very moderately, but it is very clear that we need to do something more. But here's what we, we need to do. Is it friend or foe? In our case, we have found it friend in so many ways. Uh, now, when does it become a foe? And so let's talk about some of this because the research says that people using social media since the pandemic, let's be clear, and you can understand why Marnie, right? I mean, you have no social interaction, right? Yes. I mean, what are you going to do, right? But here's what happens. It's gone up. It went up 20%. And then it's going up further and further and further. But now we're getting reports, symptoms of anxiety and depression. 
and we cannot connect the dots in a way that makes sense to the people listening today to really give them the message, please look at this, right? What's your experience with it? You're seeing it, I'm sure. And I know you saw the statistics. Oh, it's crazy because what people tend to do, myself included, it's that comparing and thinking other people are living a better life than us. And that it's very easy to stay in that dark place and that woe is me and that pity party rather than pick yourself up and be grateful and everything else. For me personally, there was a time, there was a New Year's Eve party in my neighborhood and everybody was invited. Everybody, friends of friends of friends. I was not, and I woke up that morning and I saw it on everybody's social media. I was, I don't think I left my house for a couple of weeks. How could they do this to me? This is my friends. And it was yeah. horrible. I wish I didn't know. So all of these, whether people celebrate or go out for dinner or whatever, we look at it and we think, wow, look at all that they have. But we're not only taking that one little piece of a fake picture and thinking our whole lives are horrible, contingent on that one little post somebody does. But it could be very depressing. Very depressing. It is. it is. And, you know, there are reports. I mean, for those people out there, um, I want to make sure you go to Marnie's site. But, you know, the article that came across my desk was in Everyday Health, everydayhealth.com. And it was the social media use tied to increase depressive symptoms in adults. And they go through and they, they talk to you about a couple of different things, right? Uh, but more recently, Marnie, and let's jump to this if we could. More recently... There have been new platforms that have been launched. And the new platforms, right? We're trying to tease this out a little bit. We're trying to say, okay, Facebook over here, right? You know, been around, okay. But there are new platforms now that they're saying, uh, I'm going to read it. I just want to read it because I don't want to be deleted from, from this. I don't want... YouTube or anybody to delete what we're talking about. So I want to cite this. In the article, Social Media Use Time to Increase Depressive Symptoms in Adults, uh, dated in 2021. This is when this first came out. It, I'm waiting for an update on this. So we need to get an update on this because it's outdated. But still, when you go here and you look at this, there are many more articles on it. This is what I'm reading from. When we look at it, they're looking at new platforms. So this is what it says. The year has brought an increase, I'm taking the direct quote out of this magazine. The year has been an increased awareness about potential harm that social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok can have on teens' mental health. I'm just going to hold that. Now, we know now Facebook whistleblowers, testimony before Congress, then another Facebook comes under fire after whistleblower and leaked documents. I mean, we can go on and on again. But here's where we are. What do you think the impact of these platforms have been from where you sit and what you've watched? I see TikToks. I watch, like my daughter, for example, I'm using her as an experience. She's 22. And I see they look at what other people are doing and they do it. And TikTok makes it even more, seem more appealing, more fabulous, more fun. And I see my daughter like, oh, look, I mean, I watch her say, look what they're doing. Look how cool their video is. Look how great they look. Look at their yacht. Look at these influencers, what they have. What do I have? Just a house here in Hollywood, Florida. So I think these platforms make their lives even better embellished even more and it's more in our face more in our face everywhere we look people are perfect there's no such thing as perfect so i pray that everybody just watches these things knowing that none of it is perfect nobody really looks like that there's filters i mean they put on these filters that make you look like you're 20 years old with full glam makeup it's not real but when you're watching it the perception at that moment is it's real and then that instant feel bad about yourself could ruin the whole day mm, yeah yeah. And, you know, and I wanted to say this for you all, you can take a look at this article, but since this article, there are many, more, many, many more things out there. I just want to be really clear about this. Um, there are certain things out there that are now researching what it does. Uh, there is even an article, a week off social media reduce. So let's just get clear. We're talking about a certain thing, but I want to tell you, there's an article out there. And why do you think I said seven days? We'll talk about this when we come back from break. But there's an article that came out in 2022. Okay, I'm just going to read this here. And then Marty and I are going to really take it down when we come back. A week off social media reduces depression and anxiety, colon, research. Benny, Jacob, 
let us take a short break. When we come back, I'm going to tell you, right? Came out in May, like a this year. So I, I know y'all going to email me about the other article that it's a year old, but I'm going to give you an update now because articles have come out. People like Marnie have spoken. They've, they've been out there speaking about this. And now what it's done is it's drived more empirical research, more things to really find out what is going on. And we are very clear that we can no longer not say social media addiction. We can't, we, we, we cannot not say that now. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. My very special guest, Marnie, we're going to make sure you have lots of information. Also, you're going to be able to tap into her podcast so much more. Benny, Jacob, let's go to a short break. Welcome back. So great to have all of you tune us in. I'm Dr. Pat. You're listening to the Dr. Pat Show. Uh, you can find us on Transformation Talk Radio. Uh, my very, very special guests today, we're taking on this. Social media use may be tied to increase uh, of depressive symptoms. That that's, that's an old article. So I just want to say since that article came out, there's no May anymore. We have much more research about this that like the, the May is gone. We're going to talk about that now. And my very special guest today is Marnie, Marnie Goldman. Marnie, before we just dig deep into this and we take a look at some of the latest information out here and also some of the information you've gathered, again, tell people how they can find out more about you and how they can listen to your podcast, like all of that. Um, you go to peace, love, Marnie, M A R N I dot com. There's a link for my book, which you can get on Amazon, a link for my podcasts, and I have a lot of blogs and helpful information about mental health across the board. So, peace, love, Marnie dot com. I love it. Now, I will tell you this you all in your research, you're going to find some information about the CDC, um, but their reference is not as clear in their research as what the cause is. So I just wanna be clear. You'll find an association that they talk about between mental health, but they do not separate um, where it comes from. Now, here's the good news. The good news is since articles came out a couple of years ago about this, we're now seeing the importance of new research. The latest one that I glommed onto that I really liked, I liked their methodology was a week off social media reduces depression and anxiety. Now, why do they say that? And how could they say that? Because they use empirical standards to set the study up, to study the people. They used a complete measurement scale. This was real research. I'll get to that in a minute, but I wanna hear from you. What are some of the statistics that you bumped up against, which just had your head start swimming? Colleges, college university students. Right now, I think there's an up in 130%, 130 since COVID, they went back, the anxiety and depression they're feeling. What's worse than that is 75% of those children will not ask for help. There, it's whether they come from low-income families or the LGBTQ communities, those are the most or a lot impacted, I think, the LGBT communities. But people don't want to reach out for help. They just don't want to. And I beg people, if I could get on my hands and knees and say, don't yeah. suffer alone. There are college crisis centers and counselors. But that statistic of 75% not wanting to reach out, it, they're going to just, it's like quicksand. I pray their lives don't go down like quicksand because they're overstimulated. Their pressure cookers are about to pop. Yeah. I believe. Now, what is the impact of this? And, and this is why I love the study that came out. And I just want to tell you all that this study is being, um, you, you're able to find the study in multiple magazines now because the study itself is so robust. Uh, there are multiple aspects of it. You can find it, and I'm just going to give the citation for the social media networks that are listening to this. Uh, you can find it at Bloomberg.com. A week off social media reduces depression and anxiety. That was based on uh, an empirical research that was done, and there's everything about it in the UK. So you're going to be able to see that. Then you'll see this article pop up again in different ways. You'll also see it on science news, very reputable. Uh, uh, so I'm just saying, um, and, and, and look, 
remember when I said last show, can you put your whatever down for a week? This study was a week long. They had to take a break from TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. So they had to break all of that. Seven days. I shared with you some of the results. Let's share them with people, right? The study, of course, highlights everything you've said, Marnie. But when you take a look at what the results were, they're a little bit shocking for those of us that have done research or not. They measured well-being. And they split the sample of people up into groups, right? They split them up into groups by age. And they also, one of the groups was banned, let's just say, from social media while the other was not. Okay, everybody following so far? So there are participants that use social media for eight hours a week. So this is, hello, eight, eight hours, just only eight hours, right? We know that that is not even a realistic thing. They were quizzed. They had a baseline of their anxiety levels. Here's what they found. And let's talk about this. They were asked to rate their agreement with statements such as, I've been feeling optimistic about the future. I've been thinking clearly. So these are some of the well-being. They co this comes from a very credible well-being study. So what are the results? So the people that took the break on social media, the well-being climbed. Okay, one week, everybody, seven days, from 46 to 55.93. Okay, that's just 10, almost 10 points in one week. And this is Warwick uh, uh, Edinburgh mental well-being scale. This is a real thing, right? Ready for depression? Depression dropped 7.46. That is a patient health questionnaire, right? Anxiety fell from 6.92 to 5.94. The author, Dr. Jeff Lambert, what do we want to say about this? This is a good place to stop and have you chime in here. It's very interesting when I, I'm happy to see that there is um, very passionate studies being done and that there is a downward. Because if we think about it, when we're on social media, we may not realize it consciously, but we're looking, look at the vacation they had or the new car they got. All we're doing is thinking what we don't have. So by taking that away, it's true. I mean, I know when I don't look at things, I'm not wondering anything. I love though that studies are now being done and it is showing it's going downward. So we can all, before we log on, wait, do I really want to see, all, do I really need social media today? Because you're right, it is an addiction and um, there's a way we can end it. And this is just one study. I want to be very clear. If you're really interested in understanding the addictive nature of this, let's get to the point where, and they don't talk about this, and I don't know if they even measured it, but I want to know how many of the participants were actually able to go for a week, because let's talk about addiction. Addiction to something makes it near impossible to stop without help, right? Let's talk about that morning. So we're we're not talking about casual social media users like me, who every once in a while finds a little something and like gets into a thing. We're talking about, you cannot not be on social media, right? That's the level of addiction we're talking about. How rampant do you think that is? I think it's so prevalent today. I mean, there are grownups that are on social, grownups, but from, um, people my age, older, they're posting everything they do all day long all day long, 15 posts about what they did, where they went shopping, but they can't stop. And it, it becomes annoying, you know, because we don't care. But to them, I truly believe that external validation and praise without loving themselves, that's where they think their self-love is going to come from. For one second, it may, if somebody likes something, but that's a band-aid. It's not going to make you feel better as a whole. But these people that are constantly on it want praise. It's from what I see, they want validation and praise. And I want to just give everybody an update. I got a text message. Uh, here's the update on what's going on. Yes, we're talking about um, a younger group of people, but the study did not include just younger people. However, there are new information out that outside of parenting teenagers in 2022 and looking at what this means, the latest studies are coming out that a new study revealed similar associations between depression and social media uh, use for their parents and grandparents. Okay, 
you, do you see what I'm saying here? No. What causes the addiction gap? What causes an addiction gap is the fact that even if you know you're on social media and you are finding things that are just not good for you, it's just not working for you, you're feeling worse than you did when you got on and you cannot stop participating, right? How many people are, are completing these studies, honestly? So let's talk about that. Here's what I know about research, having done it myself. You can be assured that when you're talking about topics like this and people have to self-report, like you ever, you ever do a study on alcohol, like how many drinks do you take, right? I mean, even when you go like to the doctor and they tell you how many drinks, how many, how many people raise your hand if you like put down the right amount. Okay, you put down the right amount if you're like me when you have no drinks. Okay, right. but if you're in there and you're like, oh, am I going to put down like I have one a week? And you know you don't have one a week. And even if you have one a week, you have one a week and you finish the bottle. Right. It's the same kind of arena. Yes. So anything we're really getting here is understated. What do you think? Pete, it's about owning it, taking accountability for things. From It's um, it's just, I, I'm thinking about what we said about the social media and the addiction part of it. It's like, there's no studies yet where people are able to go to, hi, my name's Marnie and I have a problem. But when you see how it affects your family dynamic, like I think how I'm constantly yelling at my daughter, put your phone down, my kids at the dinner table, families of, you see people, uh, families sitting at a dinner table, they're all on the phone. There's nobody that's saying, put the phone away because we're doing it as parents. And then we all end up arguing and it's become very annoying, very annoying. Yeah. And I want to just, I want to just say out there, let me put the caveat out there about this for all of you, because I know that we're on social media platforms, even doing this show. Here's the tricky part. The findings out there, right, Marnie, about social media health and social media, it's tricky to interpret them. And I've said this. I already made that claim for the CDC study. It's very tricky. Most studies can't prove that using a certain platform causes depression, right? They can't prove it. They study a single moment in time. That has always been the case with studies. You capture a single moment in the time. Um, I did one study in my research on broken promises that captured a moment and then went back. So I got to do a little bit further longitudinal stuff on that. But here's what I know. Now we're getting a study and especially, and I'm just going to tell you all about the latest study that came out there. And this is an article. Uh, and again, I'm going to, I'm in Harvard Magazine. So I want to give the citation, uh, April of 2022. This is, I'm not, I'm not just pontificating. I'm going to give you real things from here. Up until this study, right, they couldn't do this. However, this new study came out, and this is what's kind of cool about it. And they talk about the fact that what we're doing is social media, we're dream, we're doom scrolling. <laughs> they call it like it's a thing, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> you can even have an app that pops that up. But this latest study, here is what it is. Can't really explain what triggers the depression about um, it, it can't pinpoint right what right like what what causes it but the 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 author acknowledges let us start off to cross off alternative explanations i love this let's get rid of the alternative explanations for the relationships that we've seen see i love that process of elimination is one way you do it and so they knew the researchers in the study you know they knew that the study participants were not depressed when the study began. So you have to know that, gotcha. right? A lot of studies don't go to that. They had to know that. But the analysis also showed that these people, the participants, news sources, number of social media, social supports, face-to-face -face time with others uh, did, not mean, did not affect meaningful levels of depression. So it's an interesting finding. But I love that we're doing research on this because then they went out and identified the links between particular social media platforms and depression in certain age groups. So they had to get rid of that thing over there. Right. Isn't this what we need to really say? It's really a thing, people. This is a thing. 
it's maddening. It's making a lot of people go mad. It's, um, I, I go back to a lot of self-love with stuff. I guess social media doesn't affect me the way it used to because I truly love every single thing about me, head to toe, where I am now. But it brings out, I see with just my children, how depressed they get that they don't have the lives or doing certain things other people do. And it all goes, I just preach, it all stems back to self-love. It just all goes to that. And you don't feel yeah. down and you don't feel depressed that we don't have certain things and a gratitude for what we do have for not what we don't have. Okay, I'm going to answer y'all's question. Yes, it was Dr. Rory Perlis who did it. And the number of people in this study, just just so you don't like say there's not a 5,000 people, average age of 56, okay? Now, let's go on and talk about this a little bit further so everybody can get a little bit of information. Please go look this up yourself. But what happens is because of the way they did it, here's the breakthrough, you ready? Intriguing set of findings. Here it is. The researchers identified links between particular social media platforms and depression in certain age groups. For example, Facebook was, was associated with depression among people younger than 35, but not for those over 35. A lot, see, not one size fits all, right? Not for over TikTok and Snap, TikTok and Snapchat were connected to depressive symptoms. And then he says, I think we have more work to do to understand why associations are so different across age groups of adults. That's what Dr. Uh, Perla says. And he goes on to say, uh, or I would, I would say that was the thing that made me most eager to follow up studies and try to understand what's going on. So we did follow up. This is where we have to break it apart. So we stop generalizing, right? This is the thing. And he says again, the study can't confirm why. But I'm going to take a shot because you took a shot. Does the why have to do with addiction? Here you go. You ready? He goes on to say, what seems to be the case in kids is probably true in adults, constantly looking at images of people who appear to be happier than you and more successful than you, who generally seem to have a better life than you, certainly doesn't make most people feel better. And he goes on to say, a barrage of negative images isn't likely to help either. Social media is like drinking from a fire hose, he says, in contrast with older forms of media, which offers smaller doses of potential harmful images. Now, let's just talk about that. What does drinking from a fire hose remind you of? Addiction, right? So what he's saying and not saying it is, if you can't put that phone down, you are exactly what this researcher is talking about, right, Marnie? Yeah. If you can't put your social media device down, I don't care what you're on. Have you're, you, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Have that you ask them what's your what's your Facebook name and they're like I don't have Facebook or I don't have social media those very rare people there are out there and they truly have a very happier life they're not negative Nellies or depressed people it's very interesting I just thought of that as we were talking so I didn't mean to interrupt or jump in there no you're right but those few people they're like oh I don't have Facebook I don't have that and they're just happy-go-lucky people it makes sense yeah. And, you know, it's interesting. I know I have social media accounts. I, I don't know what they are. I couldn't tell you what my, I, I think Jacob has a better shot of telling you. I think I have one account that's personal account, another one for the show. I know we post things about the show. I know at times I even have a crust busting account. I know at times I've tried to post to something from my personal account and it went over the network account. And so they just say, do not post anything, Pat. <laughs> I'm better on Twitter. I'm much better on Twitter where I have a crust busting account. But you know, this is really the punchline for the article says when free isn't free. You know, it talks about how we need to really look at life, look at the impact and make a change. What do you want to suggest for people that are here? Um, what do you want to leave everybody with today? Thank you for joining me. And again, please let them know how they can find out more about you. Of course, peace, love, Marnie, M-A-R-N-I.com. 
it's all when I did not love myself and I just thought I was nothing. It was the worst way to live. But I go back to self-love and I beg everybody, just don't compare, stay in your lane. It doesn't matter what they're doing to the left or what anybody's doing to the right. You just have to be the best version of you because you're comparing to the uncomparable. It's not real. It's people wanting to perceive they have the best of everything. And when you can look in the mirror without comparing, for me, that has been the most peaceful, serene way to live. I love it. Now, tell everybody about some of the other things you do. Tell them about your coaching platform, if you could. I love, I, I call myself a motivational, inspirational storyteller because my storytelling is as powerful as my story. I have recovered from everything and I manage every mental health disorder there is, a host of them. I talk about my, on my podcast, Peace Love Podcast, I talk all about mental health, but like it's the weather. Like I don't talk about, we don't mention anxiety. I'm like, I have full of anxiety, like I'm talking right now. So I am just this one big mental health information bucket. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And I want to say to everybody, uh, like what we're talking about today, every pretty much everything we've said is taken from a research article or an official statistic. If you go ahead and you go in and search for this, you want to search for uh, a week off social media because it's in every article based on the study that I talked about, um, you know, that Jay Lambert did. So what you want to do is you want to go look for this, but you'll find more. Um Everything now is basing the conversations in 2022 on the studies that are being done and how social media affects your health. There's article after article after article, but it's based on really good empirical research. The Bloomberg one was one. The one I just gave you is another uh, by Harvard. And then the one that really started to pump everybody up was the seven week off of social media one. So for those of you out there, all of these are available. Everything we've talked about today in the show was taken from a, either, either a national statistic, because those are out there too, or these research articles, which you can find on their own. And we did our best to you know, use a citation so you could find a Marnie. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you, what you for what you're doing. Thank you so much. Last question, what's your personal message? What do you want to leave everybody with? Stay true to who you are. Just stay true to who you are. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. It's That's why I named my book, True to Yourself. Because if I didn't stay true to who I am, the right people would not be able to find me. So stay true to who you are. I love it. Marnie, everybody, I'm Dr. Pat. Thank you, Benny. Thank you, Jacob. And thanks to all of you. This, I know, is a topic that's on your mind. You tell us about it, and we want to help you with how to work through it. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.